Sports Fan Network. The Sporting Lockdown with Dan McLeod and Eddie Reisgar. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome in for another weekend. If you're wondering what all the noise is going on in the background, you know what day it is. JB, tell them what day it is. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, UFC 184 just kicking off. Uh, now we're, we're down here live at the tap room, obviously. As always on Sundays, you know how we do it. So a big one going to be happening today, of course, the ladies' weekend. We're going to talk more about that in a little while, but we're going to touch on some other sport. Red Scarf. What's up, man? How you doing, man? No, not too bad, you know. Feeling alive, feeling good. Oh, that's important, you know. <laughs> I, I, I think that's important. What do you think the secret is to you having a nice, relaxed life? Uh, the secret is to not really care about things that don't really matter. Brocker. That's a good way to look at it, I reckon. <laughs> You know, I, I can't argue with any of that logic whatsoever. We also joined, of course, by the ultimate writer, JB. How's your week been, JB? It's been good, very, really good, yeah. Uh, bounced back from my ill health and just been enjoying the massive amount of sport that we've been treated to this week. And, of course, making our coffees, Nate the white guy. How's it, Nate? Hey, how's it going? Good, good, good. I want to ask how your week has been, but we, I, I'm pretty sure that we're, we already know that. <laughs> tell, but tell us about your week. Tell us about... The sexual misadventures of Nate the white guy. Oh, you know, it's pretty uh, epic would be the word I'd use to describe it. It's like uh, 300 the movie. Like, what? Your sexual uh, misadventures are like 300 the movie. 300, yeah. So 300 guys. <laughs> 300 guys, <laughs> partial to anal. <laughs> okay, we're going to be here all afternoon. If you want to come down, check out UFC 184 featuring Rousey versus Ngano. It is live down here at the Tap Room 74 Wyndham Street for those listening live. For those of you who are listening to us via our podcast services, including Sir, uh, we're live on that. Well, you know, podcasting it on iTunes, Stitcher. We're also Player FM, um, and we're also on YouTube. So check out our channel. So if you're listening to that now, you already know the winner. No spoilers, okay? Hey, it's been a really big week in sport, and of course, it was capped off yesterday by a fantastic showing. In fact, not just in regards to the actual quality of the cricket, but the spectacle that was. Cricket World Cup, yeah. Black yeah. Caps v Australia. What was the highlight for you yesterday, JB? Because you're, you're a bit of a cricket man, aren't you? Definitely am. Um, you know, highlight for me, any time we beat Australia is a highlight for me. So um, it's great, definitely great to see us pull pull out, sorry, pull out the win. Nate, Yo. for you, what was the highlight for you yesterday? Uh, the fact that we didn't completely fuck it up was really nice. Because yeah. to be honest, we should have had that pretty easily. And then it just kind of... Oh, obviously, Auss- Aussie bowled great, but like chasing down 150, you should just take your time and you should just get there when you get there rather than trying to rush through it. Yeah. Thank you, former New Zealand cricketer <laughs> Nathan Evans. <laughs> um, what about you, Red Scarf? I mean, you're not a massive cricket man, but you've been getting into the you've been getting into the the, the show, yeah, the spectacle. Yeah, yeah no, no. What actually. is you know cricket World Cup and, and sort of what it means to a lot of Kiwis? Um, I actually watched. My first uh, cricket match uh, the Saturday. Half, half um, match. Hold on. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, actually, it was actually half the match. Um, no, but I actually watched the um, Australian was batting first. Is that right? Yep. Um, and I actually thought that they were going to win because they were carving up in the beginning. But um, yeah, shout out to the Black Caps that won. Did well. Um, yeah. It was Eddie even said it was quote unquote exciting. Yeah, it was exciting until I fell asleep. Wow. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> like while I was awake, I was excited for yeah. the, the game. Yeah. For me, I like okay, so I, I'm probably one of the biggest cricket tragics you're ever gonna meet. Yeah. But yesterday I went to a stag do. Alright? So I was a bit gutted. I was here before at the toss and I'm going, okay, all right, all right, all right. Win the toss and bowl. Win the toss and bowl. Yep. Aussie wins the toss, but they choose the bat anyway, which I thought was a big mistake. Yep. yep. Because the second, uh, the chasing team always tends to come out a little bit stronger and do better than than, than the team's in the total. Especially at Eden Park. I was, well, if I'd been given the opportunity to complete my sentence, well, <laughs> I would have said, <laughs> especially at Eden Park. Yeah. Now, Thank you, I go, we play Airsoft. Cool. Yeah. We then go to the stag location, which we're going to play some poker, drink some beers and that sort of thing. And we get there, and there is no Sky Television. Wow. Ooh. And Prime are not showing yeah. the game. Now, I thought Prime was supposed to be showing all the Cricket World Cup games live. Wow. L- live and uninterrupted, but... Nope. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. I was, I was fucking pissed off. And However, 
we improvised. We got out the old lappy, hooked nice. it up through HDMI, yep. streamed us some um, 45 second delayed coverage. <laughs> of, and I, I'm literally getting results on my Facebook before I'm getting the actual results of what's happening. Look, yeah. it's falling, that sort of thing. So for me, the highlight of yesterday was the bowling unit. It was uh, Trent Bolt. And you got to remember, a guy like Trent Huge. Bolt has literally come out of the wilderness when it comes to one day international cricket he's generally considered a test specialist yep. and he's come in there and I, the ball wasn't even swinging around that much off the seam or, or in the air yesterday it was literally just poor batting I think by both sides which which resulted in, in, in what happened but highlight for me Trent Bolt Daniel Vittori still our best bowler yeah, in the New Zealand team typical Dan Vittori numbers as well yeah, yeah, all these yeah very good very good numbers with Dan Vittori and like I said still our best bowler in the team regardless I mean you don't need him taking wickets what you need from Dan Vittori Tory is you need pressure at one end because that creates wicket taking opportunities at That's the other right, yeah. and you could probably Trent Bolt could probably thank Dan Vittori yeah. for I reckon two of those five definitely yeah. Yeah. Easy, quite easy and purely out of pressure yeah Vittori's uh, his whole career has been built on being consistent and just putting pressure on the other on the other on the batsman because he just bowls such a tough way to, to bat against because he just changes his flight it's hard to hit against UFC prelim fight show is also on at the moment Derek Lewis for, is about to take on the South African yeah, yeah. Ruan Potts um, just very good pronunciation the you like that Ruan Potts yeah. talking about South Africans in South Africa the question was, was brought up yesterday about how epic this win was for New Zealand and the Black Caps yeah. and I brought up a point in which, which is probably open the discussion here right now and that is is a win the best solution for the Black Caps moving forward through this Cricket World Cup. We all right. know how, how cricket can be very, uh, and it varies depending on the the environment, whether it's the pitch, yeah. whether it be the weather, and too how many that impacts. Variables. Yeah. Yeah, too many variables, and, and how that affects what happens in a game. Effectively, how I see it right now is India are going to win the other pool, meaning that South Africa are going to end up. Um, second. Coming second in that yeah. pool, putting them when it comes to semi-final stage cricket on and finals. Sorry, on yeah. our side of on it. our. S- That's right. You're like you're like fucking. He's in your mind. Hey. You're in my mind. Hey. It, it is freaking me out right now. <laughs> <laughs> how, you're, you're naked. how you're just ending my sentences with Chris, everything. Chris you guys should have sex. Mind freak. Mind freak. Chris Angel mind freak. <laughs> But effectively what it's going to do, it's going to put us on the same side as South Africa. Yep. Mm-hmm. Therefore, meaning that we're going to take South Africa on, potentially if we can get through whoever our quarterfinal opponent is, yep. in the semi-final. In Eden Park? or just At in Eden Park. Eden Park. Yep. Okay. Here's the concern. And people go to me, well, you might as well just go through and beat the best teams and win all your games if you possibly can. I don't quite look at it like that. This is how I look at it. And we've got Matt G in the background. He's, he's going to jump on in a little bit and have a bit of a chat. And he's sort of got that Thoughtfully very posing. Inti- the thoughtful pose on with his hand yeah. across his face here's how I look at it the Indians have already proven that they do not like playing in New Zealand conditions yeah. they do not play the ball well when it's swinging in the air and that was a result um, so that was shown in, in last year and, yeah. and they just don't play well the That's conditions right. in Australia are suiting them a little bit better because it's a little bit dry. The yeah. ball is turning a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So they're playing a little bit better. And and, and I thought, um, I think in New Zealand, their spin bowling attack becomes void by the conditions because yeah. the ball just doesn't turn. It doesn't turn here in New Zealand. Australia's conditions are a lot more similar to India's. And I think it's well, good. yeah, a little bit. A, a lot more. A little, little bit in regards to A lot less yeah. different, maybe. Yeah. Where, where New Zealand pitches tend to be fairly green. Even these drop in pitches yesterday look quite yeah. white and yeah. flat. Yeah. Um, sorry. W- but it was literally a betting. It was like a betting on a bit of concrete. Yeah. Which everyone was surprised at why they're no one, no well, they're only able to score 150 runs. Yeah, that's right. So, that's number one. I'm I'm happy to take India on over here. South Africa, however, have proven multiple times in the last three years that they play very, very well in New Zealand conditions because yeah. of the similarities, particularly with how the ball moves in the air, swing-wise, yeah. as what it does in places like um, uh, Cape Town and, yeah. and Newlands. And, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? That's right. So, that is why I believe we should be... If we had lost yesterday, I wouldn't have been a big hassle to me. I would have gone, oh, no, we lost. I wouldn't have been mad. But I would have looked forward, moving forward, cool, Let's get on the same side as India. Yeah, that's right. Nathan Evans. Yo. How do you feel about that? I think you always want to beat Australia basically because it's Australia. I, I get that. You know, <laughs> you kind of you want to be tactical about it, but you also don't want to lose because it's not great for confidence and all that. You want to But you think momentum. yesterday's result's going to be good for confidence? That's right. You know, we, we, I mean, you've won, you've, barely you've, got you've, there, you've won a game where your bowling, your bowling unit's going to come out feeling great, but so is the Australian bowling unit. Yeah. Yeah. Mitchell Stark is... I mean, yeah. I, I read something on... Um, yeah. What was it? 
coming out of the Australian out of the Australian media this morning that yeah. Mitchell Stark is the best bowler in the in the Cricket World Cup. Wow, mm-hmm. and I think that's a pretty big call considering right. what Trent Bolt did to them as well. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I understand that point, but cricket is a game, particularly. I mean, it's a long cricket is a game that lasts longer than fifty overs, lasts longer than twenty overs, yeah. and that's evident in what can happen and how conditions can change in a test match. It is the same thing with this tournament here. The conditions will change depending on where we play and who we play. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, that's why it's a major. I mean, what do you? What, what's your thoughts, JB? Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. And you know, um, uh, you know, if we could uh, avoid. South Africa, you know, their legendary seamers, swingers, etc., things like that. You know, if we could avoid them, get India instead. Um, you know, as you say, the track record for India is a lot less impressive on our wickets than uh, than South Africa. We're just going to welcome in Mr. Fat Cat, Matt G. How are you doing, Matt? Matt the Stat. Matt What's the up? Stat. How do, you, how do you feel about that? We're just talking about what you've, what you've been listening Matt. to. Magic Matt. What's your, what, what's your take <laughs> on this? Um, look, I'm a big cricket guy. Uh, I've been playing my, my whole life, you know, and... Uh, it, it began when I was seven years old. The, 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 uh, excitement, <laughs> I was playing nippers. The excitement machine that it is. Um, look, yesterday's win, man. I'll take it against Australia. I hear what you're saying um, about India and especially the way they perform over here and, and the semi-final progression. Yeah. But um, to be honest, I think whoever ends up in that top four is going to be able to beat each other in any conditions on the day, wherever. I guess um, slightly more favourable, yes, having India over here. But to be honest, even had we lost that game against Australia, well, we would still probably win our pool. India can't beat New Zealand in over New Zealand. here. They can't. I believe that one hundred percent. They in this World Cup, actually, no. Sorry, let me let me re, let me let me let me rephrase it. They cannot beat this New Zealand team yeah, yeah. in New Zealand at the moment. Okay. Why is that? Because they, they just they just don't have the tools to be able to combat. Yeah. Um, so they're not. Okay, so not that good. Well, no, they're their very, track they're, record over here. They're a very good team. Yeah, they're a very good team. They have a very poor track record on New Zealand, ah. and it's usually down to the fact. So teams will have um, certain units which are, which are prize pieces to them. Okay, so it's yeah. like with any army in any battle. Yeah. yeah, For the New Zealand at the moment, it's the seam attack. That's right. All right. So the fast bowlers or the medium pace bowlers. Yeah. These are the guys that can bowl the ball, and depending on what the weather conditions are doing, can make the ball very and um, uh, um, difficult to play. Yeah, it may, they it, it, they move the ball in the air. They literally End off the seam. They're literally air bending. Yes, right? yes, indeed. Yeah. Where the Indian key pieces of them is always going to be their batting. However, yeah. it's already been proved that they but don't bat very, very well against against swing bowling. Yeah. And the other area is going to be the spinners. That's their other key unit. Yeah. But the ball in so in New Zealand, the ball doesn't spin a lot. Yeah. We have greener wickets. You know, we 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 don't have the conditions that are conducive to to the type of spin that Indians excel for against. You know. So I think for uh, Mr. Red Scarf's benefit and uh, anyone listening who's not uh, really familiar with how cricket works, um, certain conditions suit certain teams. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got your subtropical climates, you've got sort of New Zealand, Australia climates, which are also quite different. Um, you head over to the, uh, the subcontinent and, and into Asia where, where the ball spins very well. Um, and it's, it's certain teams play certain ways in, in, you know, and uh, are suited to better conditions. The same way that when we travel to Sri Lanka or we travel to India... We're on their turf. We struggle over there. Oh, yeah. okay. Then. Yeah, struggle, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, okay, but, like, it's more difficult for us because we are not used to the conditions. Because cricket is quite over unique over in that um, you're playing on, like, a living surface, you know, that, that can change over the period, the course of the game, even even on a short game. Quite like sailing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, similar, yeah, that's right. Um, one thing regarding the cricket that I haven't heard anyone talk about, I know I was a little bit late, but... Um, uh, was Brendan McCullum's captaincy? Yeah, you know, um, as much as as much as uh, Vittori coming in and um, and then Trent Bolt just uh, destroying them all. I yep. think uh, McCullum, his captaincy and his tactics, and I love this aggressiveness that he's going after with uh, yeah. it's something that New Zealand's cricket needed. We've got the talent there, but uh, we've just needed that aggressive captaincy and uh, the right kind of aggressive captaincy. And uh, hats off to McCullum for for somewhat making that happen. I appreciate McCullum's captaincy. I appreciate the player that he is, okay? But I'll tell you what. I have been. I was listening to the same argument on Veach before I came in here. And they're going on about how he's so aggressive. His captaincy is so aggressive. He is, he, he's doing this. He's doing that. He's literally playing off the Stephen Fleming captaincy manual yeah. is what he's doing. Now, Vittori went away from that a little bit when he was captain. That's right. But... It, but 
McCullum is a good player, and but he's he's got this Richie McCornis about him at the moment in New Zealand, where he can't do wrong. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he's 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 the greatest. He, I, I remember he scored that three hundred. Yeah, you know, and, and, and his test three hundred, oh, yeah. and people are talking about him being the greatest New Zealand batsman of all time. <laughs> and I'm looking at them, and I'm going, "Are you fucking joking? Are you, are, you, are you kidding me? The guy averages, I think, thirty, uh, like mid thirties in test cricket. The guy doesn't touch Martin Crowe's scrotum. No, no. You know, in, in regards to being the greatest cr- uh, batsman that New Zealand's ever had. Yeah. So I like McCullum. I've always liked McCullum. Yeah. I've always appreciated his entertaining um, fact. Um, factor that he brings into the game mm-hmm. yes. I do like him as a captain but it's yeah I, I don't know it's Stephen Fleming I thought was was in regards to New Zealand cricketing captain Stephen Fleming repackaged how we look at cricket in New Zealand yep. he, to be, he definitely he definitely captain very similar to say like a, a Steve War in regards to yep. constant I mean how often have you seen in a, in a one day international having three slips a gully and then a guy at silly at silly mid off or something yeah, like that yeah. you know like up really really close in a one day international that's right yep. you know and, and that's what McCullum's doing a little bit at the moment so I think um, in that regard I think uh, Fleming Fleming's um, captaincy reminded me a lot of um, Hansi Cronje Except for the whole, uh, except for the whole match fixing and yeah. dying and dying <laughs> and being killed by the by, by, by the Pakistani that's, mafia. That's right. Except, except for that um, sort of factor of things, um, yeah, I think he sort of moved with those times and he evolved New Zealand's cricket. But in saying that, um, I don't think we would have seen a Stephen Fleming type kind of captaincy bring on Dan Vittori in the eighth over or, or whatever when when we're getting pummeled by by Warner and crew. It just wouldn't have happened, I don't think. No, I've seen Fleming bring on Vittori in the first 10, though. You know? That's the earliest Vittori's ever bowled. Yeah, well, I've seen him so, get brought on pretty early. Yeah, I've seen him open the bowling, but not at international level. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. So it's, my, it's, my, 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 I yeah. mean, I, I just think McCullum's sort of gone to that next level. Well, and I, I don't think he's off, off Fleming's... McCullum's lucky such. though. No, I, I think it's pretty close. I think McCullum's very lucky, though, that he's got key players yeah. that are far superior to what... That's Fleming had to use. That's what he I didn't have the say. bowling. He didn't have. He didn't have the Tim Salvies and the Trim Bolts the moving tools, the ball. The tools that he had. Who did he have? He had yeah. Kyle Mills, who I think is probably the biggest, like, most overrated cricketer we've ever had play in the black. Chris Martin. Yeah, well, Chris Martin didn't really play a lot of one-day international cricket. Oh, one-day. So no, you're yeah, looking. Yeah. So you had a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you're right. The tools that McCullum has at his disposal are a world class, you know, so and uh, tools that possibly you know previous captains recently didn't have. Well, that's right. So I think New Zealand's always growing decent all-rounders and good yep. cricketers, yep. but we've lacked the X factor. Um, we had Fleming had Bond. Fleming had Bond. Bond. Oh, yes. yeah. I was going to say, but other than Bond, I mean, Bond stay healthy, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so. Yeah, I mean, we had Bond, and he had that X Factor, but other than that, like, w- w- who's really had that real supreme X Factor over the years? Yeah. And you know, Vittori. Like, these guys. A lot of above average players, but even no Vittori. exceptional players. Even Vittori, he's not X Factor, man. He's not uh, Murilitharan, you know, like, that's X Factor spin bowling. So, right why, there, if, he's, if he's not an X Factor player, then, the why, the then why is he constantly getting picked up by T20 sides in the IPL, the Big Bash? He played in the, he played in the, um, the West Indian one as well. Because he's incredibly good. That's right. Is That's that right. is that not X Factor enough? No, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think. I don't think X Factor and in, in, in incredibly. Good. He averaged like forty five in Test cricket between I think two thousand and eight and two thousand and eleven. You know, he was. Yes. He became. He, he transformed from being a seventeen year old finger off spinner who could barely move the ball, which yeah. really made him an orthodox left armer, and turned himself into a genuine all rounder match winner. And you are discounting the fact that he creates the the pressure that guys like Bolton that are able to capitalize on that's X Factor that's how you change games and if you talk to I think if you talk to um, um, like cricket purists and that sort of thing they'll that they bring that they often bring that up that, that's what yeah. Vittori's doing Vittori's worth um, the pressure that he brings is worth yeah. two to three wickets that other guys are taking if you shut end. down one end then the other end has to has to respond and make up for it and then there's more risk and then the wickets come absolutely that's, that's X-Factor I don't think that's X-Factor man I think X-Factor is the bolt coming in and ripping in through five wickets on the back of a very good solid performance that's how I feel about it. Do you think it's the same thing with Southie's seven wickets the other day? Is, yeah. Does that make, so he's the X Factor as well. I think. He, well, that was an X Factor performance. Okay, I, well, I've, I've just I've never been on Southie's like full on bandwagon. Like yeah. So so what, what's with the Bolt bandwagon? He sort of goes through. I've I've always liked Trent Bolt. The first time I seen him come out, I was like, this guy has got got 
the goods. And Southie just sort of goes oh, up, down, up, down, and sort of. Southie's been the most consistent you know, limited overs performer in bowling that we've had in the last five years. Apart from Kyle Mills. Kyle Mills hasn't been at his level <laughs> since mate. probably hasn't Your been mate. there since 2010, 2011. Except he has, because the statistics say he's still. So he's he still was he was the number one one day international bowler in 2012. Yeah, that's right. But what's he done since then? Well, he's, he's hovered around that number six spot, and he's been so in the, a lot of it. And, so you, you, you know, believe Kyle Mills has had a greater impact on the team as a as on the bowling unit than what Tim Southey has in the last five years? No, I don't. Well, that, but that's what you just said. I just said to you that uh, Tim Southey has been the most has been the the X Factor player, or the most consistent player in that back cab's bowling unit for the last five years. And you said no, Kyle Mills. So which one is it? Is he consistent or is he X Factor? Consistent. Okay. This is a stalemate. This is a. This is a. It's not really a stalemate, because you've just told me that Kyle Mills has been the most consistent performer. But then I just asked you the same question. You said no. I said, well, so you're telling me Kyle Mills in the last five years has been the most consistent performer in that team, in that bowling unit? That's the question. I think Saudi was coming into the Black Caps team as Kyle Mills was sort of like a uh, So a my, my question right. still is, in the last five years, yep. the most consistent piece in the bowling unit has been who, Kyle Mills or Tim Southey? Well, it'd be Southey because he's actually played the game. Okay, there we go. Where Mills hasn't. It's the sporting lockdown. <laughs> it's the sporting lockdown. I, I, I love being right. Someone uh, order me a steak. I tell you what, I appreciate it. Do you want a chili dog or something? The price is right, y'all. Yeah, let's get I, a chili dog. I think we're, think we're going to need to get a chili dog chili on here. Dogs I think you guys should have a fist fight. I think you should <laughs> just continue. Fist fight. I think you should continue. You're looking, you're looking a bit faded today on a Sunday afternoon. What's was, the story there, well, you know, I'm not the biggest cricket fan, and I've, I've openly admitted that. And sometimes when we talk about cricket, like your average, well, not your average, uh, there is a certain percentage of guys in New Zealand that don't like cricket. I fall into that category. <laughs> there's a, I, I love that phrase. Yeah. There's a certain percentage. There's always a certain percentage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be one guy, you're a certain yeah, percentage. Yeah. You know? But uh, I mean, like, you know, in terms of the cricket, I'm glad that they won because if they didn't win yesterday, I would be one of those Kiwis that would be like, ah, uh, waste of time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, t- so. I'll tell you what, though. I think yesterday's game has an impact, and it is the sort of thing that can gain fans. Like, Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I was yeah. sitting there with my girlfriend, right? 1992, man. Exactly. I was, sitting there right. with, I was sitting there with my girlfriend, who's like the most anti-cricket ever, which pretty much every girlfriend ever is. Yeah. And um, I had to drop her somewhere, and I'm like, yeah, we're not going Or a anywhere. certain percentage uh, of girlfriends. Uh, I thought he said drop her like you. <laughs> <laughs> Square on the jaw. Yeah, nah, and I said, uh, no, no, we're not going anywhere, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, about ten minutes later, you know, we're sort of six or seven wickets down, and she's like, "I was like, look, do you really need to go?" She says, "No," and she's like, "I want to watch the rest of the game." Oh wow, well, there you go. There you go. You know, she well, was into once it. Once you so. get the girlfriend vote of approval, like, yeah, I mean, she was into it. So, and I'm quite, you know, it's good. It's good. It's, it's nice. It's showing. I think uh, one thing we lack over here in New Zealand is is uh, female sports fans. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. When I go, I've been overseas to a lot of a lot of games, like different sort of sports, and. I always notice the amount of chicks in a crowd that's not like, say, like the sevens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. As you do. My man. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, you go to the sevens, right? Let's be honest. They're yeah. not rugby purists or anything like that. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I go over like... Well, you know, I guess I, like rugby rugby teams have like rugby groupings. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Do, do cricket players have cricket groupings? I'm sure. Sure, surely. Surely. I think I think cricket's a tough one. I mean... Well, yeah, yeah you have athletes, money and fame. There's got to be groupies. Australia seems to think 35% of their cricketing crowd's female that turn up to live events. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, or do they just mean they're pussies? Yeah, maybe. I don't... Uh, yeah. So maybe that's why they play like they do at the moment. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, like I said I've been to some baseball games some basketball games a couple of football games overseas and there's a lot of chicks man like you know fully kitted out in the gears and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah that's right yeah and then so but girls wearing gridiron gear looks hot yeah girls wearing cricket gears Looks <laughs> the whites looks like they're going like, to go, oh, wow. go play bowls. Uh, virgins. You know, like, uh, the, I think the Breakers game, I was at a Breakers game last week, and yeah. uh, big ups, they've gone through the finals. After yeah, the yeah. The and shout out to Corey Webster. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, there's a few chicks in the crowd there, but I think that's a lot of uh, dudes dragging chicks along sort of thing. But, yeah, um, yeah, of course, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're, you know, you go to your, your average Auckland Blues game or, or well, you know, something like that. Stephen Adams has had a bit of an impact on right. the, um, yeah. you know, basketball in New Zealand. I can definitely say the Breakers got groupies. 
Oh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> the breakers, they got groupies. Oh, they got groupies. New Zealand cricket team, I'm not too sure, you know. Yeah, well, it's not all about cricket, so it's about the whole round of sport. Uh, Nate, yeah, you, yeah. you look like you got opinion, man. Throw it. Oh, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. I literally just jumped in. <laughs> We're talking about... He's, he's sitting there because he's... Do you think, get, do you think cricketers have groupies? Cricketers yes, do yeah. cricketers oh, no doubt. Groupies. Every sports person has yeah, groupies, that, that's, that's okay, what I said. You, you don't count as one of the groupies, though. How do no. you get a <laughs> Professional chess players probably have groupies. Oh, I'm wow. sure everyone does. So that that, that cricketing groupie uh, uh, subject spawned off, like, female female uh, sporting fans attending events in New Zealand. I don't, I, I've never seen much of it. No, that's probably a pretty low percentage, but I'd imagine yep. it's getting bigger because just as kind of sport is growing into more of a uh, general fan base rather than sports yeah. always been a male thing, but For I sure. think it's it's definitely like if you look at the Olympics now, how many woman events there are, yep. it's almost everything has a woman event now. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, th- I think it's becoming as probably as it getting should, more yeah, even. As yeah. it should, you know, um, it's there is definitely a place for female sports, oh, and um, yeah. the more oh, the fine. more f- female <laughs> sports and <laughs> athletes there are, the higher the profile and the better, you know. And yeah, no. it'll be good to have these women getting paid as well as men or, or yeah, somewhere yeah. near it. Cause yeah. A lot of them barely get paid at all. Absolutely. I think a good example of that recently and um, the, the effects of social media as well is... Cyclists. Um, what's... Uh, yeah, okay. And what's her name? Uh, that fighter, uh, Rousey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, she's a, she's a machine, eh? Well, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. T- in today's Breaking Records, you got um, the first ever... Uh, main event and co-main main event, and co-main uh, event female. for the yeah. UFC yeah. that's the right UFC, yeah. Yeah, it's so. like you know we're calling it the uh, WMMA super fight weekend basically it's, yeah, cool. it's huge you had big fights last week, last night sorry uh, yesterday in, in uh, New Zealand time and you got huge fights coming up today so yeah. mm. just on women's sport did any of you guys actually funny question did any of you guys watch the uh, New Zealand uh, Australia uh, the women's play league yeah the no. nines yeah, yeah. the nines oh, nine. that, that was awesome like, yeah yeah, yeah. Actually, but more entertaining. The girls can smash, eh? Dude, yeah. you should have seen some of these hits. That there were was in. some really big shoulder hits. In big there. hits, yeah. man. Big hits. All right, oh, should, yeah. should we move on to uh, NBA talk and oh, get yeah. on to a bit of uh, the devastating for Chicago Bull fan news that uh, Derek Rose. Derek out. Rose, yeah, that's right. Um, um, not looking too great, but um, he's chosen to go for the meniscus surgery, getting it removed yeah, rather, removed than, uh, rather uh, than replacement. Yeah, he's is. got pretty shitty knees, eh? Man, the very the last yeah. few seasons, they have just been third major knee surgery and him and, Kobe, give up? Him and Kobe, bro, they're, they're both in that similar sort yeah, of. Yeah, but hasn't Kobe at least had more court time than? Oh, him? Bro, yeah, he Kobe's has. one of the greatest players ever. Yeah, so. yeah. I just yeah. Derek Rose has missed a lot of games. Like he's yeah. missed basically two full seasons. Yeah, sure. really, like he's, right. he's been out heaps. He's only twenty six. He, um, yeah. you know, th- he's looking to have the same operation that D Wade, Dwayne Wade, uh, had, yeah. and. Uh, the difference is that D Wade had his when he was still a in college, younger. so you know yeah. he's about twenty yeah. years it's, old, sort of thing. It's a lot better surgery short term. It means he can bounce yeah. back in four to six weeks. Is yeah. the timeline? And uh, even if he gets ten years out of his knee, then yeah. um, that, that's fine. He's already twenty six. Yeah. He'll be finished. The long term impact, which is kind of ironic, given his uh, his statement a wee while ago, how he said he wants to be able to like go to his daughter's graduation. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. Okay. That yeah, means yeah. basically he's going to be bone on bone for the rest of his life in his yeah. knees, which well, is until he retires and then he'll get it. He'll, yeah. he'll, then he'll get a, you a imagine new. At some point, hopefully he'll get it fully repaired. Uh, yeah. He could even do it potentially like in an off season. Yeah. Because uh, I'd imagine a, a full repair would be a, a six month recovery rather than does a it, six um, week month. Does it kind of pose the question why they're going to rush him back? Like, you know, is this kind of the shit will get off the pot? They're probably, the they're probably looking at the East or in, in the league in general at the moment and going, the Cavs are only going to get better yeah. as they grow up. That's what's up. Uh, and also, like, the Warriors are only going to get better. Yep. So it's like, but they lost to the this Cavs. This is probably one of their best year chances in terms of the Cavs are still figuring things out. Yeah. The West is like obviously stacked, but they've got a really good team. They've got like even without Rose, I think they're probably still yeah. one of well, the top four. They're teams used to the operating East. without him, and so I think th- they'll definitely get to the second round. I think without him, it's after there where they kind of need a, a good point guard. I just, um, I just feel sorry for the guy, man. Oh, like, yeah, and sucks. I feel, I still, Friday. I feel sorry for basketball fans. Like everyone, you know, oh, man. you sort of, you don't want your good players playing the big games and stuff on the on the opposite side. But yeah. I just think he makes a better game to yeah, watch. Yeah, like, you want to, you want to watch stars play, whether you yeah. like them or not. Like the best players are the best players, and they're the yeah, most and, fun to watch. You know, D Rose MVP. Like you know, he, he's just he's just an amazing player. He yeah, hasn't been this, quite the same player. Yeah, and uh, you know, you never know whether he's going to bounce back from this and be at a lower level again. Yeah. And Speaking of MVP, who do you think 
Uh, given the last kind of couple of weeks with Westbrook going nuts and yeah. kind of uh, the Warriors kind of slipping a little bit, they've lost a couple of games. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, who, who's your What's pick up? at the moment for MVP if, it, if the season ended right now? Steph Curry still wins MVP this year. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. agree. And the reason why is because he is the poster boy now for the division for the league. He is the only he's the only player that is going to matter because right now the journalists are sick and tired of talking about LeBron James. Yeah. Yep. Should I, say, should, I, should, should, should I say somebody else so we can duke it out? What do you reckon? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I'm, I'm, on. I'm on board with it. Would only be on it only here. Harden or LeBron, wouldn't it? As, Harden as won't win it because not enough journalists like yeah, Harden. Yeah, that's right. So LeBron won't win it because yeah. journalists are sick of talking about LeBron. Yeah, yeah. It can only be Steph Curry or Russell Westbrook. Yeah, and I think Westbrook's the number with eight. Westbrook is, despite his Westbrook's not amazing yet. figures he's putting out, he's going to be the eight seed. He, yep, number one. Yep, they're going to end up in the eight seed, but also. People just don't like Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They don't like his swagger. His got that attitude. He's got that attitude. They don't like mm. it. They want the MVP. This is why Kobe Bryant has only ever won one MVP title. It's because they don't want to give it to somebody who's got into trouble for this or for that, That's or right. doesn't get on well with teammates, or yeah, isn't yeah. exactly the perfect poster boy. Yeah. LeBron James was the perfect poster boy coming out of high school That's right. and being basically the top, the number one high school national basketball player in the entire league, and then he comes into the into NBA um, uh, the division and, and monsters everybody yeah he's the poster boy yeah definitely but you can only talk about him for so long it's not Jordan it's not the now's the era of social media where we talk about things five minutes every day yeah, there's yeah. new stories and new access to things when if Jordan was around now I can guarantee you people would be sick and tired of Jordan as well yeah yeah you know the speed that information travels now and becomes redundant is, is like you say it's much much quicker and what? that's and that's a big factor into it because yeah. who votes for these who votes for the MVP the people who, pro- right. who provide yeah. the, the, the information yeah news yeah. writers will spread the information yeah, one one case for James Harden for MVP is his numbers are like ridiculous, leading the league in scoring and yeah. and everything like seven and seven as well. Um, and the other, the main thing going for him is Dwight Howard's been out. I think almost the majority of this year he's missed a lot of time. Yeah. Yet that's still the number three seed, and he's really there's one option on that team, and it's James Harden. That's yeah, a big yeah. fall off to the second best player on that team, sure. even really with Dwight Howard because he's been pretty average when he's been out there this year. Yeah. So, so I, I think that bodes well for him, saying that he's carried a team to the third seed in the West, which is like the toughest division by a mile. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think you I think you did right, and I saw a uh, interesting interview on NBA TV uh, the other day with James Harden. Yeah. And they pretty much sat him down and asked him if he thought he was the best player in the league and you know he just said well why not yeah you know and he, he spat it out there and i i really i just didn't like the side that i saw to james harden and it kind of goes back to what dan was saying about the attitude and stuff like that he just appeared to me to come across very like Arrogant. do you see anyone better he, he wouldn't to be me, like, that player harden, without it to me james, oh, i don't know about that is james harden really a top five player in the league i don't rate like, him is he really no. James Harden three seasons ago, whatever it was, was the number one sixth player in the competition. Yeah. yeah. Is he? Re- are you trying to tell me that there is not four better players in the NBA than him? The, the other thing, LeBron kind of James, Kevin Durant when he's healthy. Yeah. At the moment, Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, yeah. Steph, Steph Curry. Curry. There is four right there. Right. Four George Davis, when he comes back. Anthony Davis. Yeah, yeah. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis. Absolutely. You know, they're so close though. Eh? That's what yeah. makes it great. You know, Derek Rose. But Harden, Harden, Harden is like the, the only Derek star Rose on his comes team. In conversation he? anymore? No, no. Regardless of what, what's happened with his injuries and stuff, he is n- Derek Rose isn't even a top ten player. He's not that no. player anymore. No, that's right. And um, <clears throat> I, I had it. Sorry, I lost my train of thought a little bit there, but. There is lots of other players which I think are at a high caliber than James Harden. Agree. Yeah. You know why James Harden looks so good? Because he's playing on a team he's the only apart guy from on that Dwight yeah. who, who's putting out any numbers. Yeah. You know, let's not forget his efficiency rate is horrible. Let's not forget the fact yeah, yeah, that he yeah. turns the ball over six or seven times a game. Yeah. Let's not forget the fact that he gives away, I think, more fouls than any other guard. And he's a and flopper from now. Exactly. Yeah. You know, James Harden is not even deserving to be in the conversation about of being in the race for the MVP yeah. title. Where is Anthony Davis in this conversation? He's, yeah. he's too you know? far Just down the west. Yeah. 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 So I think I think he's. Uh, and that's the worst part about this about how about the MVP race. Yeah. 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 I think I think he's a he's a product uh, struggling as a product of his environment, whereas the Pelicans, they're not quite stepping up as as good as everyone thought they would, yeah. and he's sort of, you know, it's it's kind of like. Um, uh, you know, he's the best player of not a bad bunch, but not a good bunch. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. when you've got someone like Harden who's excelling out of a better bunch and a team that's doing well, people are going to notice yeah, it more, yeah, you know. And for me, sorry, um, it, it's just 
Steph Curry, he's, he's got my MVP at the moment. And I think um, what Dan was just saying before on Harden, um, I look at his turnovers and his defensive efficiency, which is terrible. Yeah. Um, the guy just doesn't like to play defense. That's right. And for me, an MVP is your most valuable player, not the guy yeah. who scores the most points and can step back a That's three right. at any time. I was just reading the thing before situation. where Steph Curry's got the seventh best opponent field goal percentage in the league, which means on defense he's the seventh yeah. best guy at making you miss. Yeah, so that's, that's right. pretty huge. And yeah. this is why I'm a Steph Curry fan. Yeah. You know, plus the little picks that he gets, he, he seems yeah. like he doesn't have outstanding steal figures, but he gets these like, yeah. these yeah. like, like uh, if, as if there's such thing as a clutch steal. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, like, he's he's huge. Like yeah. his his numbers are incredible, but also he's. He's not a guy that goes out and gets numbers. Like he's very Chris Paul, where like Chris Paul yeah. just goes out and wants to win. Yeah. Just like goes he'll out go out and plays the game, does one what's game. required. Yeah, and, and he's like very efficient shooting all year. Yeah, he's been like obviously best player on the best team, which always helps. Because I was reading a thing on I think it was on NBA.com where they're saying since like the '60s, there's yeah. been two players that have won MVP that haven't been the top two seed. Yeah, and yeah. it was like Karl Malone who was the three seed, and then. Uh, I can't remember who the other one was, and they were three seed as well. So yeah. like, no one outside of three seats ever won MVP. Wow, which is like that says a lot. So if you say Russell Westbrook's the eight seed, that's pretty far back from the, the two seed. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that and that's but that shows the recognition that he's getting in regards to his all round numbers. Yeah. And oh, why yeah. he's even considered as being part of that race for the MVP because he's just playing so ridiculously well. His 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 February month was like one of the greatest months in in league history. That's really, right? Yeah. See, the problem for me, Westbrook, he's the man. And he knows it. But the reason for me he doesn't get MVP is A, because of that fact that he knows it and he shows it. Yeah. Number two is because of his time out this season. Yeah, that I, yeah, I just don't think you can give an MVP to someone who's missed He's only missed season. four games more than LeBron. Yeah. Oh, okay, is that right? Yeah. yeah. All right. He's missed 14. It doesn't seem that much, does it? Like, yeah, that's right. And yeah. he'll miss another one this weekend. Like, yeah. Yeah, so I just, you know, uh, does LeBron fall into that same argument then? I don't know. You know, for me... Like I say, I'm not the biggest Steph Curry fanboy, yeah. but he is good. And You're close, though. He, I'm pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm like convincing myself to go along with this, you know? Yeah. But I think he's, Psychic driving. He seems like a nice guy. Like and He comes across in interviews very well, and like he has got that poster so, boy sort so of... So for you, that is, that is a requisite for winning an MVP. That helps. I think... I think I think you have to recognize makes, makes that. you more relatable. Pe- I people guess. have to like you because yeah, yeah, at the end right. of the day, the writers are vo- uh, the the, pub- the journalists are uh, voting yeah. for you, and I think some coaches and stuff as well. Yeah. So it's like if they don't like you, if you've got nothing, right. if they've got nothing good to write about you, they're going to be a little less inclined to vote for you. Yeah. I think if it was all down on a piece of paper, you sure, know, you're, sure. You're, you're just, Picking just all black names and, white, and stats yeah. lines in the yeah. wor- in the world of social media, in the world of ESPN, yeah. we have to recognize. Well, the yeah, on of, paper it would be probably Westbrook. Or to be honest, Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is putting up picking yeah, numbers yeah. this year. So yeah. Absolutely, like, yeah. Obviously, he's not on a great team, but at the same time, like his numbers are just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like that's the toss-up that most people are considering it to be a four-person race at the moment. Where it's Harden, yeah. Curry, uh, LeBron, LeBron, and then Westbrook. Westbrook, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And so if you got that four-person race, I think most people at the moment will be picking Harden or Curry based on where they are in seeding wise yep. and how consistent they've been all year because yeah. LeBron you know he missed 10 games the Cavs struggled early yeah. they're doing well now they might even end up getting to this Although, two you seed know, LeBron is all, he's one of the league leaders in turnovers this season like yeah. you know his numbers have been for, for LeBron his numbers have been average crap. yeah so yeah you know, yeah I that's all for LeBron that's, that's right, right. Yeah, he's LeBron, right? so yeah. that's why he probably <laughs> can't win that yeah he's still doing like 25 that, 6 that and he 6 he even said himself in an interview that he's he like set the bar too high yeah, yeah. so now he you know he's got to perform to that level you, you can't you can't do thirty nine and nine every year. Which yeah, that's like, right. He's been close to like yeah. so many times. The thing I do like about LeBron though, when he doesn't hit thirty ten and ten or whatever, yeah, he's pissed off with himself. Yeah, yeah. Man. and you yeah. can see it. You he's know, he's been knows, playing with like, some fire. Yeah, like, yeah you know the, the you know the the streak that the um, Cavs were on. LeBron yeah, plays the, his best basketball when he's pissed off. Yeah, yeah that's you know? right. Whereas some yeah. player like Steph Curry, he'll play his best basketball in a more relaxed environment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When sort of everyone's moving the ball well yeah. and everyone having a laugh you know yeah. LeBron comes out and it's like this is my fourth quarter we're down by 15 yeah, this right. is LeBron time and he'll he'll make the win you know? what, did, what did you guys make of the Warriors losing pretty badly to the Cavs the other day where I was stoked um, Cavs are my team obviously so I was stoked I found it really interesting because I've said all year that kind of shooting teams if you get cold you're in trouble in the it's playoffs up, and basically what happened was Curry 
and Thompson didn't shoot that well yeah. and they got yeah. absolutely blown up because they just don't have that they don't have the depth they don't have that go to if we need a score we can go down to a like, big man if you compare them even to the Cavs who aren't the greatest shooters but look at the depth that the Cavs have in perimeter yeah. shooting you know yep. They've got LeBron himself, obviously, and then they've got all those pieces that they brought in in the last two months. That's yeah. the thing. For me, the Cavs, they cover the whole court pretty well. Yeah. Their bench is not the most productive bench, but it's a yeah. good bench, yeah, and they still right. cover well. But like you say, you know, you've got a shooting team, they go cold. The way to beat the Golden State is you play big ball against them yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you can. Yeah, and the Cavs day. can now, you know, recruiting Mozgov or Lobsgov, yes. yeah. as I like to call Lobsgov. them. Lobsgov. <laughs> um, yeah. Just on that, um, who, what court were they on? That was uh, at Cleveland. That was at the queue. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, for me, it's, it's you know basketball NBA throws up some strange results sometimes. Yeah, it does. Oh, I wouldn't call it I wouldn't home call, court away. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't call it strange that the Cavs beat the Warriors. No, no, not at all. No. Not at all. Yeah. But you know, out of a seven it game series, it was a blowout series, though, pretty much. Out of a seven game series, I'd have to lean towards Golden State yeah. just because yeah. of their consistency of performances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it doesn't. What if Cavs me. had home court? What, first the, first two games, games in Cleveland? Yeah. Mm. I think they'll still go one and one. Yeah. Wow. The Golden State travels pretty well, man. They do, yeah. yeah. You know, it, so. it does show that, like, you know, shooting teams, when they go cold, it, they're in trouble because yeah. you, it's hard Whereas to shoot yourself out of a hole. Fundamentals teams, you know. Yeah. It's like when the Mavs won the championship uh, three or four years ago now, yeah, was right. they were just hot all, all players. Like, yeah. They were just hitting all their shots. Yeah. And you can't stop that. But when they miss, there's you're in actually um, there was some interesting results come out of the NBA uh, in the past few days, you know, and it sort of <laughs> it's, makes you rethink. Yeah. Rethink a lot yeah. of stuff. Oh, that like that the, whole trade deadline. The uh, Wizards scenario. have been struggling. The Wizards yes, went down against four, four in a row. They yep. went. They went down against the Sixers, man. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They're, that's they're looking like they're going to fall out of the top four in the East yeah. now. Well, yeah. the Cavs are up to the third in the East now. They come. They're two behind the Raptors. Uh, yeah. Nine behind. And the, and the Raptors Hawks. haven't been playing particularly great either. Yeah, They've struggled. The Cavs are going to finish second if they continue. It looks like the way yeah. They are. I you don't know, think they'll catch number one, but no, nah, that's unlikely. They'd have to do. Yeah. They'd have to like not lose the rest but then, of the way. You know, the Bulls. How far? How far could the Bulls? The Bulls. Sorry, fall. They won't fall out of the playoffs. No, which no, I think is the important not. thing. But yeah. they they could fall to the point you know, where they're facing they the Cavs. Seven or eight. You know, like yeah. if they fall to eight and they have they're to play trouble. the Hawks, then yeah. with, with those bigs that the Hawks have and you know the perimeter shooting. Yeah, it's an interesting one because if you finish in the top eight of either division. Yeah. Unless you're the one and two seed, like it's not that big of a deal to me where you're finishing because no. yeah, yeah. like it, it's more kind of come down to who would our team match up better against. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I hope there's no sort of um you know, like if you catch the drift I'm going on here, like oh we might choke this game because Yeah, yeah, that's we might end uh, up it does play a big thing because uh you know, you might be the one versus eight seed, but the eight seed matches up really well against you, and you're yeah, in trouble. Yeah, of course, of that's course. right. Like that's, 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 that's happened sort of before where eight, you know? eight seeds have beaten one yeah. seeds, and, and, and a lot of sports as well. It's like yeah. the matchup matters a lot more than the actual number. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah, um, even like um, it starts to matter when you go to second and third round of the playoffs because yeah. then you're starting. You're consistently playing the best teams. But I mean, you're gonna you got, if you're gonna win, you're gonna have to beat the good teams eventually, anyway. Talking about how hot the Cavs have been, uh, that was one of the interesting results. They went down to the Pacers by about eight points. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so 93-86. Yeah, yep. Pacers up over that the Cavs. That was at, at yeah. Indiana, and that was in the same day that the Sixers that, beat the Wizards. They so. they had no no LeBron, no Kyrie. So. Yeah, yeah, they they were resting players. So. Yep. So you know that that, that makes a big difference. All right, it's a sporting lockdown on your Sunday afternoon. We were here with the boys here, chilling out, talking about the sport. If you want to watch, come out and watch UFC 184. It's going to be all happening this afternoon, live. Rousey versus Zingano. We're Six looking forward to it. Just now. It is ladies' weekend. Six, yeah, uh, wow, big elbow. Yeah, Diego Lima, who uh, doesn't have the world's greatest chin, just got finished by Tim Means. And I think we picked Lima to get to get finished off pretty quickly. Yeah, though. that that's definitely right. Sporting lockdown. We're going to catch everybody in just a little bit. Just hang right there. We'll be back in just a tick. This is Sporting Lockdown Sunday afternoon down in the tap room, 74 Wyndham Street. It's good to have you listening in. JB, give them up. Tell them where can they listen to us. Download the podcast again. Yeah, so if you want to catch us, we're on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, as well as YouTube. Just check out, for, uh, sorry, keep an eye out for our channels. Hey, very, very quickly, just want to touch on uh, Super Rugby Course is up and running. It's rolling yeah. through. Oh. Crusaders smashed by the Chiefs the other night. Yeah, yeah. Huge yeah. win. Is the Crusader team still living off the prior glory of the Crusaders gone by? Because it's under Todd Blackadder, that Blackadder they haven't yeah. been able to bring a title back down to Christchurch. I think it's the expectation thing, eh? You know, it is it is the um, the previous success that they've had. 
uh, the Blues felt that for a while when um, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, years, <laughs> years and years ago they, when, <laughs> when they were the dominant team and then like yeah. sort of everyone thought it was going to come right three or four years later yeah. and they just slowly slipped to where they are now you know which is uh, I'm a big Blues fan I still am I'll stay loyal but man it's tough um, so has the Crusaders fallen off the horse I don't know they've still got too many good players um, they're a good team They'll be there and thereabouts, but the Chiefs looked pretty class the other day. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is honestly depressing to be a fucking Blues fan right at the moment. Oh, man. Actually, for the last few years, you know, a team full of pretty boys that you think they could actually win the game, but instead they keep getting their ass kicked, you know? Yeah. So and it's... Is it a coaching problem? Is it? I don't know. Is JK a good coach? I, I can't work it out. Like, I don't are know they what, actually yeah. doing a rebuild? Like, is there a rebuild phase happening? No, they got players who've been around for sort of three odd years and stuff, and yeah, yeah. it's not a rebuild phase. It's just, I think it's just poor. It just to be, to be honest, they got, they got pretty unlucky on the weekend. The penalty got given against them, um, I think, was a fairly controversial penalty. Yeah, and then they should have received the penalty with time up on the clock anyway to be almost directly in front. So, yeah, I think they got a bit unlucky, and I think people people are going to get on the um, on the the Blues catastrophe wagon pretty quickly purely because of um, the way the last two three four five in fact the last ten seasons has gone <laughs> yeah, you say. know and so it's always going to be about yes, the Blues mate, not being able yes. to do this and Blues not being able to do that so <clears throat> I wouldn't panic quite yet I'd give them probably another three to four hours people won't be panicking down in Christchurch about the Crusaders being 0-2 after two rounds the Blues yeah. should be a playoff team though they should be on paper yeah, I don't, yeah, see, yeah, I don't yeah. even know if they should be a playoff team I think the talent in New Zealand rugby spread right across a lot yeah, of the teams. Definitely. definitely the um, um, definitely the the Crusaders are the stronger team at the moment. Um, player wise, if you have a look, if you have a look at them across the board, but moving forward, I think you look at the Hurricanes. Hurricanes are two and zero. Chiefs are two and zero. They've got they've got good players across their team. They got All Blacks. They got star players as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know if the Blues are a playoff team. I know the Highlanders aren't, and that's for sure. No, but that's right. Anyway, so you got there with the rugby. The league cocaine <laughs> yeah, yeah. fiasco the is continuing <laughs> on. Ashley Harrison yeah. um, was called in the other day by the Queensland Police in regards yeah. to his role. And uh, I think it's three counts of distributing cocaine. I think what you got to look at it here is um, <clears throat> if you have a good read and breakdown of, of what's been, what they've been laid with, the charges laid, it's no different to JB handing me um, an illegal substance now, and then me giving it to my boys to share. That's basically what they're being. What, That's what, right. what, what sounds yeah. like they're being pinched on. Mm. However, I think what will surprise some people is because there may be a couple of players who are a little bit more in in the um, <coughs> the distribution sort of setup. Yeah, yeah. Which could get surprising. So. That's continued. Lydia Ko yesterday, around a 61, almost yeah. cracked that 60 mark, but women's golf, man, never looked so good in New Zealand. Going yeah, off, right? right yeah. Yeah. Is that and that Asian girl? It is, yes, man. And have you well, seen her when she takes Kiwi. her glasses off? Like, no. Isn't she like 14? No, she's 17. 17. <laughs> and you know what they say? No, but... 17. <laughs> 17's still illegal. Yeah, yeah. What the, what the, anyway, but no, she... Top, I mean, fuck... She is crea- legal. What I what I don't oh, understand wow. is when it comes around to the um, the talk us. about the Halbergs and stuff, people don't think what she's achieved is as great as what Valerie Adams has achieved in the last yeah, coming yeah. twelve months. The same as what um, Lisa Carrington has achieved in the last twelve months. Yeah. Everything. I think it's a bit unfair. I think Lydia Ko, mm-hmm. at seventeen years of age, to be dominating the the women's golf scene, and people go, "Well, but how big is women's golf?" Well, women's golf isn't that big in New Zealand. That's right. But you think about how many recreational golfers mm. there are worldwide. Yeah, we're talking hundreds of millions. If you're if you're on top of the world in anything, you've done pretty well, That's especially it, yeah, at yeah. seventeen and one being of the world's so most dominant played sports. As well. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. It, I, I think so as well. Hey, just quickly. I think um, she needs to join the team, team New Zealand. Have them win as well with Sydney Bill. Well, oh. she would probably be an excellent addition to the Team New Zealand side at the moment because she's got good. Maths. It seems like everything is a bit <laughs> fucked up at the moment. There's an interesting actually um, interview that's going to be uh, run today on News Talk ZB and Radio Sport with Tony Veach with Peter Burling today, who's the new helmsman of Team New, team new Zealand. Yeah. It seems like he's going to continue to be the Team New Zealand helmsman as well as focus on being um, winning gold at Rio. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he is able to Big to, j- to balance the two. Um, yeah, that's right. And Peter. Um, 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 uh, Brendan Duke will be sort of right by his side there as well. So yeah. I'm I'm excited. I think it's great. I, I think uh, Grant Dalton's getting a little bit of bad rap. Like Murray Decker ran um, yeah, something yeah. in the Herald the other day where he was basically ripping in the Grant Dalton. The Grant Dalton needs to go. 
cut it off at the top of the head. They wouldn't have any money if it wasn't for Grant There'd Dolan. There'd be no team without Grant Dolan. And that's basically what, what that um, uh, the Mexican guy who lives in Monaco, who, who funds Team New Zealand, said. Yeah. He said, we would only give the money because of Grant Dalton. The relationships that he's created I, over I, the yeah, decades. Yeah, he know? needs to be there. Grant, Grant Dalton is yeah. like sailing New Zealand, you know? Yeah. like uh, He glad hands the bankrollers. I think, I think um, that's how it works. <coughs> now, Russell, say, Russell Coots did worse by us than him. Yeah, man, I'm. I'm what by leaving? Everybody freaked out yeah, about. Like, everyone freaked uh, out about Russell Coots. I get it. Off, like, the money, man. Team. Yeah, I get it. I, I get it. But like, I just the don't guy stop. wanted to win, and this is a sure way to win. So yeah, well, I get it. Yeah. But you know, I'm just saying morally. Uh, he didn't want to win. Uh, he, he, are you talking about Russell Coots leaving Team New Zealand? Yeah, yeah. No, he left for the money. He left. The, he, yeah. he he left to. Um, um, to win more money, to to, to get more money, yeah, that <laughs> was win with it, a link. Win life. To win him, Red Butterworth, <laughs> Murray Jones, win and be richer than the type. Anyone. Yeah, the type five they caught, they went off to get more money. And yeah, yeah, man, I uh, why not? I got to, exactly. Why, why why can't you go off and earn more money? The window money? of opportunity for professional sports, even though sailors is a lot longer. Like the window of opportunities are so small, you got to make that money when it's there. Not the real money, unless you're Peter Burling. But that real yeah, yeah. that real money as a skipper, yeah. by the time you work yourself through, you do you go through the amateur circuit. You, you compete in the Olympic Games and whatever. It isn't that big a window. Why yeah. you have a look at um, Dean Barker? Dean Barker's been what at the helm for 15 years, yeah. and only 12 of that was in competition. Yes. So yes. that's like the standard sportsman's life window. Yeah. I just yeah. I just feel a bit like this. Just on on that um, the Russell Coots, the switching the Butterworth. I'm a big Butterworth fan as well. He was my favourite sailor for some yeah. reason. I don't know why. But um, you know, it's the kind of thing that. Let's say if uh, rugby was in the professional era, well, it is, but uh, in, in, in the sort of the more the money um, and trading trading way, let's sure. say Richie McCaw had um, <laughs> Richie McCaw had um, sort of Australian descent, and then they offered him five times the amount of money to go go play for Australia. He left New Zealand to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's just like okay sure why not because you know yeah. bank account because you're entitled to it and all that sort of stuff but morally on a moral level it's just not quite where I'd, where I'd go with you're talking about Russell Coots leaving um, you Still. missed that whole thing so Russell no. Russell Coots gets another job and takes it I don't, I don't get it. Well, it I, just talk, it's not I, just, even I just talked about that, but you just missed it. Yeah. Team, like, team, the, team New Zealand is an illusion that it's part of our Team New Zealand is not even a representative, that's though, right, of, of, an, of a national exactly body. exactly what I'm saying. Team New Zealand is a private entity. It's an illusion. Nah, let's, let's be... Okay, in the, in the marketplace, okay... Like people view Team New Zealand as New Zealand, as we view but, the All Blacks. But do they yacht in the? Do they sail in the marketplace? Well, yeah, they do. <laughs> what, what team do you support? What team do you support in the NBA? Orlando Magic man. Okay, so Orlando Magic. <laughs> Do you think if you're an Orlando resident, if you if they decide to up and pack the the Magic to somewhere else, you think you're the only entitled to have the, the Magic in Orlando? Do you think it should go which, like that? Which has happened before. Ex- well, of course. But does do, do But do you think they, they they don't they don't have the right to move the brands to somewhere else? So you say like if the Magic became the LA Magic. Yeah. But to me, it would be a regional thing. Like I'm just loyal to my homeland. But so it's like, a but it's a I'd but it's a privately owned uh, privately owned organization. Yeah, so they can do that. But like then, Team New Zealand. So Orlando would still then have another team, right? Not necessarily. Not if there was only a certain well, number of licenses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But. So Team New Zealand isn't team actually league. the New Zealand team. No, it's not like the no, All Blacks no. or the New Zealand no. Rugby League. So That's Team right. New Zealand is a privately owned entity. Is that one of the reasons why people don't want to put the money into the thing? Because they're pretty not much, the country. pretty much, yeah. yeah. And that's actually a fair argument. People don't that's want to put it, money yeah. into Team New Zealand because, well, hold on, it's not a, it's not a national. Why it's should they? With the, national it's not a national team. side that's governed by a national body which receives money from Spark. They're receiving. They're a privately owned organization receiving money from. So uh, it's a bunch of rich guys giving us money. Pr- pretty much. Pretty much. Well, yeah. That's what know? the yeah, like American the Cup is. But yeah. the collection yeah. of rich dudes. Uh, the, re- okay. the reality of the situation is if you went out and surveyed people going down the street and you said, you know, hey, Alinghi is Italy, right? And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. you know, sort Alinghi of... Uh, was, from, was from Switzerland. Switzerland, whatever. Right? I get confused. You mean like Luna Rossa? Like L- Luna Rossa. Part yeah, of Luna Rossa. Yeah. That's, that, that's the one, right? And then, you know, you got your, your spittle crew, but... Uh, like people would view Team New Zealand as New are Zealand. they Team USA? Well, are they? Because he's Australian, right? So it's kind so of like. But my, my question is: Is Oracle Team USA? No, it's Team Oracle. But they are. But they are the Americans. You know, people view in the, in the a lot of Kiwis are no, they involved rep- with Oracle. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah, absolutely. But they still represent USA. As in, like, if you walk down the street, that's and a marketing ask people, angle. But I though, represent New Zealand when I go stand at a bar in Melbourne. I'm like, yeah, I'm a Kiwi <laughs> representing New Zealand. I'm not. I'm not. I, I can do whatever I want because I'm not governed by any this, national rules. The whole spin with America's Cup teams is just that. It's just marketing. You know, it's just yeah. nationalism, 
marketing it's not actual it just sounds like money going to rich guys yeah really and, the, sure. and the problem with For the sure. perception we talked about this last week as to why the money is good so that, that the money argument is uh, doesn't need to come into it here yeah. the argument that needs to be discussed here is that whether or not just because New Zealanders view it as their team it's like the Warriors you think because the Warriors are called the New Zealand Warriors that they've automatically become our team yeah that's right it's, an, it's a franchise yeah it's an it's a privately owned corporation. It's an organization. Yeah, okay, we get the we get the the, the, the dotted eyes and the cross teeth. So would like, you be so really up, would you be really upset if tomorrow if Manu Vatavai walked out on his con- walked out on his contract and the Warriors allowed him to go somewhere else? They made him a free agent and he went and picked up a contract with uh, Manly because they paid him a whole bunch of money. Not really, because I don't feel I don't feel like in public perception he represents New Zealand. But you think Team New Zealand does? Yeah, I, like I do. I think so because I get behind them because I think they represent our country. But I get what you're saying, right? Like on the on the paper. So there's got to be something in there. Why are they not just Team Emirates? But they called Emirates Team New Zealand. Yeah, Emirates no, they called Zealand. Emirates Team New Zealand. So why? That's what, is that's what I <laughs> that is what he said. <laughs> yeah, but hang on. Before you just go off and like that. Why? Why? <laughs> why are they just not Team Emirates? Because they're everyone's Team New Zealand. Because, because it's team the New marketing, Zealand, bro. Team but New Zealand was a franchise, just well, the same way that New Zealand Warriors is a registered franchise. Yeah. Yep. Same thing. So if it's funded by do you off, think the, offshore overseas do you, do you people, th- where does the New Zealand part come into it? Why is the New Zealand part there? Why isn't it's it? The, the New Zealand. Emirates. Hold on a second. The New Zealand government funded. Yes. Yep. They put money into it. Yes. Uh, the New Zealand section of telecom put money into it. Yes. Or what? What was telecom? Yeah. Yep. So there's so there's money coming from New Zealand that's going into it. Yes. Yep. Yep, so your, your point there was why they call Team New Zealand if the money's not coming from within New Zealand, but it, a portion of it is. $36 million from the last campaign came from the New Zealand government, came which, from the New Zealand taxpayers' money yes. into a privately owned franchise. Yes, which in turn gives us a reason to represent so, our country, right? So what you're trying to say is, is, is unless you are, are, are governed by a New Zealand body, you shouldn't use a New Zealand name? Not really. Okay. So, so when people ask me where you're from, I'm like, I'm a New Zealander. So what I'm saying is, right... Why is it not Team Emirates? Let's say if the Australian government decided because the to franchise pu- was called Team New Zealand. So if the Australian government decided to pump forty or fifty mil into that campaign of Team Emirates, it would be Emirates Team Australia. No, I'm sure there'd be why a negotiation because the franchise is called Team New Zealand. The, that's why I don't think you understand. No, I understand. Organi- okay, so the organisation is called Team New Zealand. Does it matter where the money comes from? Do you think, um, I'm trying to think, uh, well, in New Zealand, for instance, say if in New Zealand yeah. sold 60% of their shares to a Canadian organization, okay, yeah. and that Canadian organization was happy with being called in New Zealand, do you still have a problem with it? I don't, I don't know, you know. That's my point. Where yeah, New I, I'm, I'm not sure where I stand the, with the that. The brand is Team New Zealand. The brand is in New Zealand. Yeah. Regardless of where the money comes from, the brand is what is recognized. Just because in New Zealand sells 60% or controlling assets or some other foreign type of financial income, doesn't mean they have to change the brand. Similar yeah. to the New York Knicks, right? They're funded by Russian money. That's right. But they're not called, you know, the Vladivostok yeah. Knicks. They're called the New York. Pretty much, and, that, and that's my point. I mean, everyone, I think everyone gets caught up. They, everyone goes, "Oh, Team New Zealand, Team New Zealand." They're how Russell Coots ran out on the country, and also, I don't look at it like that. I look at it, Russell Coots and Brad Butterworth and Murray Jones deciding to leave an organization to go work somewhere else where they can get paid more money to, 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 to feed their kids better and yep. to clothe their kids or their families and whatever better and provide a better lifestyle and for be them. winners. Put it like this. If someone came to me tomorrow and said to me, Dan, we want you to close the doors of the tap room and come work for us and we'll pay you $150,000 a year. Gone. Man, I'll shut the he motherfucker. Would <laughs> he would I'll be gone. He would be gone, motherfucker. This would be Yo, the last episode of this the podcast. Would be, this would be the sporting lockdown brought to you by blah, 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 <laughs> somewhere on the viaduct. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> you know, and, and, that's, and, that's, and that's, my, that's my point. Everyone, oh, and I love Team New Zealand. I've loved, America, I've loved America's Cup since, 19, since 1992. Yeah. I hate the America's I have, Cup. I have I loved it. Shit. I've loved it from that moment. I didn't really know much about it before 1990. Yeah, yeah. I know about the history of KZ1 and KZ7 yeah, yeah. now. I know about that Chris history Dixon, now. Et cetera. But in, re- in regards, when you, if you look at yachting for me, I, I love it. I follow it. I don't know a lot about it. I barely know what tacking is. I barely know what jiving is. I thought it was, I thought it was uh, jiving. Like, yeah, get down and dance to <laughs> the hand drive. Jive turkey. Yeah, pretty, mu- yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what I thought it was. No, but... I don't know about that stuff. What I do know is that a team, it's, a, it's an organization that I want to follow. In the same way that I follow the Los Angeles Lakers, in the same yeah. way that I follow um, the, West, the, West, the West Tigers. Okay, but it's not the same way you'd follow the All Blacks? Uh, no. 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So no. there's, a, there's a bridge. But there's, that's there's a bridge. It almost needs to be more defined between. But isn't this your, your understanding? But of there, it? there is, there is though. So this is what I'm saying in the public perception. Yeah, yeah. That the yeah. Te- Emirates Team New Zealand is viewed the same way the All Blacks are. So if that that they represent New Zealand, yeah, but so it's, it's it's the bridge that needs to be defined between hey, this is a franchise sport, and if you put in the research here, yeah. sure you're going to find that out, right? Fine, so, we get that. Yeah. But a national team shouldn't come down and be subjected to things like Russian money and. Okay, blah, 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 so and so what are the All Blacks called? So they call the All Blacks, right? The New Zealand All Blacks. I A G. Right? What are the Blacks? No, they're not. They're not. They're called the New Zealand All Blacks. Oh, yeah. I A G are jersey sponsors. Oh, yeah. What are the Black Caps called? New Zealand Black The New Zealand Black Caps. What are the Warriors called? New Zealand Warriors. Wrong. They're called the Vodafone New Zealand Warriors. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what are, what's Team New Zealand called? Emirates, Emirates, Emirates Team New Zealand. So and that, the that is the clarity. That is the, that is the defined difference between the yeah, two yeah, franchises. Sure. Oh, I love nice. a healthy debate. They, End of the day, they, though. You, you brought that point home nicely, bro. Nice. Thank, yeah, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 think, I think I look forward to next week, Mr. Groves. Yeah, but the, the, see <laughs> the, I understand that, like, my you, you know more about the sport. Like you know more about the sport than the average your average other Kiwi would. Yeah, but I look at I don't necessarily so so, yeah. but so like the general perception that you believe in doesn't necessarily mean that everyone else has the same. There's there's going to be yep. a lot of people that will be like me, for example. So if not that, that yeah. they actually thought that. Do you think um, the majority of New Zealand care about the situation with Team New Zealand? To no. be, to be uh, not well, not the majority that I would know. That's that's not what I asked. I asked, do you think the majority of like, you take a cross section of New Zealanders? Do you think the majority yeah, well, of them care? I, every, I'm, to be honest, I'm not too sure. Because people, because people, I, I could say, say all the people I know, yeah. except for probably ten yep. percent, would really care about. And that's not a fair cross section or sample of New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you an example of why New Zealanders care about it. Because there, that is why it is in the media's face at the moment. It's that is why, because people that's give right. a shit at the moment. You know, it's like if the All Blacks lose the World Cup tomorrow. The country goes into mourning. The newspapers <laughs> fucking die. Everyone gets all upset yeah. it's because oh, yeah. the majority of New Zealanders care, you know. Yeah, it's the same thing with this world. I Cup. think it's more corporate New Zealand cares. No, not, I not disagree. Every day. No, I'd, I think you'll find every because the sailing community is actually made up of blue collar people. That's right. It, it actually really is. So a lot of the people you see out in hobby crafts or or, or yachting out on out on the um yeah. out in the Gulf on a Sunday afternoon. These are people breaking they're, they're, their balls. Yeah, they're not like stuff. people who've got like multi million. They're right. not the ones with the super yachts. Yeah. yeah. However, the super yacht ones are the ones making the money. That's right. But yet again, back actually to a point of match, which is right, those that do care at sort of like. Middle, middle of the road Kiwi New Zealanders they care because they're supporting a team which they've got in their mind is the New Zealand representation and and that's not Team New Zealand's fault that's, and right. that's that, where I was going yeah. with it. They, they do play on it though which Absolutely. sort of is part of Matt's point but I, I think since Grant Dalton's come on they've yeah, moved yeah. away from that that's right yeah I think when Tom Schneckenberg ran, um, 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 had them in 2000 and um, whoa, seven. yeah was it? Yeah, five. After, uh, no, it must have been 2007, 1999, 2003, 2007. Yeah, there you go. After the Coots and them walked out, I think from there, they tried to move away from that whole loyal campaign and, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and made it more about, nah, it's Emirates, Team New Zealand, blah, blah, blah. blah. And yeah. so Dalton has put that in effect. Yeah. I think Dalton's getting a really hard, a really tough rap at the moment, though. Oh, I like him. I, I his mean, his job's right. to run an organization. Yeah, and syndicate he's leaders it, are know? always going to get that, I, I think. He's CEOs of anything are. He's got yeah. a job and he's doing his job. It's you know? sport, yeah. It's a sporting lockdown Sunday afternoon. Matt G could have been around a little bit over time. UFC one eight four is going to kick off in forty five minutes time. Yeah, yeah. We're down at the tap room. It is seventy four Wyndham Street. Almost forgot the address there. <laughs> Come check it out. UFC one eight four. Rousey Zingano. Women's Rousey. weekend. Rousey. Yeah. Rousey. I love running. Real sport. Re- I oh, would love. Wow. I would love. Yeah. yeah real I sport. Real sport. Hey, yeah. one, one quick punching quick a dude note. while he's defensive. As real as it gets. Yep. No standing count. <laughs> one, <laughs> one quick note before we real go uh, on, on real sport is uh, something that's pretty exciting that's just come out in the news. Orlando Magic. No. Uh, oh, your event coming up. Real real no, sport. No. Uh, no. 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 Fat no. Cat presents. Oh, no. No. Oh, no plugs. <laughs> no plugs. <laughs> no plugs. Uh, there's a plug, but for somebody else. There's something I just heard on along the way here. Um, Wait. Do we get a cut of this? Uh, there's no cut. You know, <laughs> but I, ex- I expect as my friends, you guys will attend this event with me and have a very good social time. Automania? No. Ah. Oh. The Professional Darts League is coming to New Zealand at the end of Are August. Are you competing? Oh, the Professional what? Know, you should compete. <laughs> <man>. PDL. <laughs> Professional dance. You know, you know, like the ones that you see on TV, and the, all the British dudes are getting drunk in the crowd and having a good time. Yeah, they're bringing the kitchen sink quote, quote the kitchen sink. They're bringing it to New Zealand. All right, end of August. 
That's a good time, man. Hey, and I'm going to be there. And the dartsball championships got announced. They're coming to New Zealand as well. Is that like urban dance or like what kind of dance? Darts. 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 Oh, darts. darts. <laughs> oh, I, fuck, I thought you said that. You, yeah, you yeah, I heard that on Radio Sport earlier darts. today as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, darts. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Let's go get pissed, man. Yeah, let's man, go. I want to get pissed and, you know. <laughs> Ooh, let's go. What's up? Thanks for it today. Good hey, you're welcome. Hey, love you. Oh, I love you too, mate. Uh, Romance. The ultimate rider, JB. Hey, yo. Matt G, thanks for dropping in again. Yeah. And the white guy, Nate, who's out running, getting our coffee. So, <laughs> doing what every good producer does. We're going to be back in a little bit with Sprawl and Brawl in the next two minutes. If you want to listen in, stick right there. Other than that, we'll see you next listen Sunday. To Sprawl and Brawl, or I'll Sun- kill you. You what? <laughs> what? Kill you. I will find you what? and I will kill you. What? Been a part of being. I'll kill you, Mel. It's thrust shot right here on SFM.